It took a decade for the Museum of Fine Arts Houston to collect the items on display for their groundbreaking exhibition, War Photography. The exhibit explores the war through the lens of more than 280 photographers from 28 nations and spans 165 years from the mid-1800s to present-day conflicts. The exhibition War Photography has a slash between war and photography because we began with the premise that war is an entity uh, on its own and photography is an entity on its own and this exhibition is about the coming together of both. From the beginning we wanted only the strongest photographs we could find. Those that live on past the historical moment. Those that, if you know nothing about the war in Bosnia or the civil wars in Africa or any of the other conflicts, there's something in that photograph that engages you on a personal level. One of the critics used the word heart. And that's an odd word to use in an art review. But I'm glad because we felt sympathy for the men and women who were fighting. We felt sympathy for the civilians who were caught in the crossfire. And we tried to organize the exhibition in such a way that there's a balance between the really tough sections and sections where the soldiers are having fun. You know, they're wrestling with each other and they're playing cards. We have people playing cards from the 19th century right up to the Iraq war. We wanted to show that everybody's human, that they have these complex personalities. We didn't want to simplify the story. During the, the kind of breakup of the Soviet Union, there was a republic in the south of Russia called Chechnya, a very tiny place. It's probably not bigger than the size of Connecticut. This place historically had a, a problem with Russia, never really wanting to be a part of Russia. So it became a huge outbreak of war. And I really wanted to show just the experience of you know all these these kids basically being sent down. He was a member of part of a tank force and they had been ambushed and a lot of his colleagues had been killed. And he was sort of in a sort of a shell shock. I could see it was very hard to talk to him at that moment. And then he got whisked away. We all think photography could, you know, end war and but I somehow think it will be with us unfortunately. <laughs> And I think the power of photography is somehow, it, at least it's a, it's a document, and it tells the story, which becomes very important, of a lot of people who, whose stories would just disappear. I have a son who would have been a, of draft age, and I thought if he went to war, how would he recover from that? And so as a portrait photographer, I was interested in meeting um, men and women who volunteer for service. I photographed everybody standing in sort of head and shoulders uh, portrait and then I asked everybody to put their head on the table and I've made photographs like the one of Soldier Burkholz. Craig Burkholz had served two tours, a tour in Iraq and a tour in Afghanistan. He came home, he got married, went to school, became a police officer which is what he'd always wanted to do and then was killed at a domestic abuse call and the shooter was another Iraq vet. His mother wrote to me and said, please send me a picture of him because his time in Iraq and Afghanistan was very hard on him and his family. And this image portrays his trials. It's a very powerful collection of images, but we really felt that if we were going to tell the story, we had to tell the story, the full story. This is the photograph of my class when we were 13. This picture somehow narrates the story of a generation, my generation, that was affected by a military dictatorship. Well, many of us were against the dictatorship. The victims were just kidnapped, taken from their homes, killed, tortured. In order to overcome the pain of, of these absences, uh, I had a tool, and the tool was photography. I decided to write on that picture with the fate of each one of my classmates. Martin is in the picture just beside me. He was 13 in the moment of the picture and uh, he was uh, in 76, 22 when he was kidnapped and disappeared. 
There is the case of uh, Jorge. He wasn't kidnapped, but he got crazy. Claudio, who is beside him, was shot in the street. And Eric got fed up and he went to Madrid, and there he is now. Ruth is in Helsinki, Anna Murlender is in Israel. And these are the consequences of exile, these are the consequences of violence. We all have the class picture. Therefore, it's in a way a universal image. Do we all study it in a way or another and have this kind of image? And therefore, it is not referring only to me, to my generation, but in a way to any class that can be affected by uh, terror, by violence, by war. One of the key words for us in putting this exhibition together was respect. Respect for the veterans, for the people who served or who are serving. Respect for the photographers. My grandfather served on the docks of Morocco and Italy and South Africa, you know, dispersing the troops, getting them to where they needed to be, and uh, getting them the, the um, supplies that they needed. So he took a lot of pride in that and spoke about it every chance he got. The image is from a closet in their bedroom. It has his helmet and a walking cane and his belt from World War II. There's a universal connection to it. I think everybody's obviously lost you know, a family member to whether it's war or just uh, lost their family member and kind of had to deal with uh, the things that they've cherished and stockpiled over the years. One of the men who works here at the museum said that after seeing the exhibition, he can talk to his brother who's stationed in Afghanistan and have a better understanding of what his brother's going through. That made us feel great. We tried to be inclusive of everybody and everything that is affected in some way by all the ramifications of a conflict situation. For more information, visit mfah.org.